Hola, bonjour ladies, how are you all doing? Today we are going to go over how and why you should tap into your ambiguity, your ambiguous features, the things that confuse people and probably confused you at one point in your life, why you should tap into that as much as possible um, and how that can positively impact your self-identity. So I've been receiving, you know, as the channel grows, I have been receiving more and more comments from people outside of the community who don't get it, um, or saviors, of course, light skin saviors, who want to try and gaslight us into thinking that, you know, we're just being delusional or we're getting upset over some petty comments and that none of our experiences really um, have hold a candle to the experiences that unambiguous uh, dark skinned black women go through. And so with that, of course, comes your typical insult, your typical light skin tears, your typical no one says you have ramen noodle hair, your um, just your typical insult onto our phenotype that are okay for others to say, but of course would just be absolutely awful if we were to say to them. So that's kind of what I want to highlight here. One thing about the MLS experience is that we're constantly bullied and taught by strangers, by people who claim to be our friends, sometimes by our own family members to completely downplay our ambiguity and our features. So everything about us is scrutinized. Our curly hair is scrutinized. So if you have curly hair and it doesn't have a perfect spiral from ends to tips, then you don't really have curly hair and you have heat damage and you need to fix that or there's some kind of chemical process that's ruining your hair. Um, I don't hear anyone ever go, oh, well, this person doesn't have straight hair because they bleached it. That's actually just making their hair look straighter. Like, But you, you will hear that argument when you are MLS and you have curly hair and people are trying to debate your hair like they are trying to debate Beyonce's and they'll say well based off of the trajectory of her root and the lighting of the video and the picture and if you measure from here to here you will see that the first two centimeters of her hair is actually 4C but because she has blonde highlights she now has 3B hair and she's a fraud you know and so everything is constantly scrutinized. So it's like, oh, the only way that she could tap into her true self is if she were to just completely have a 4C kinky afro. But even when we do that, that's also scrutinized because apparently um, if you're someone like, what's her name? Joelle, I believe, on on YouTube. she ha She's biracial and she has 4C hair. Apparently her 4C hair is built different from other people's 4C hair, right? So it's like, it doesn't matter. Um, the goalposts will always be moving, but there's always this, this whole, like, you can't ever do anything that enhances your ambiguity because then it ruins you, right? Then you're not being, then you're not a true light skin, right? And so... Another thing is that if we look too light in the winter, then we're bleaching. Um, if we don't want to get a tan, then we're colorists. So there's all these these things that are said to gaslight, uh, gaslight us into doing anything that doesn't enhance our beauty or enhance our ambiguity. So maybe you are um, half white and going blonde enhances, you know, that you know, that undertone that you received from your white side or those features you received from your white side. And now all of a sudden it's just like a crime. Like, how dare you? You've ruined everything. That's like the response. And so that can create a lot of MLS trauma that, you know, causes us to hide our phenotype, to hide the things that have made us into who we are, to hide the things that, you know, maybe features that our own family members may have. Like, uh, red hair might run into your run in your family and maybe you didn't get red hair but you want to dye your hair red and you want to feel closer to like your Irish side and you're being told that like you're some kind of fraud or you're trying to be something you're not how can you try to be something uh, how can you not be something that is literally in your blood um and so we we end up avoiding you know 
sunscreen uh, we end up avoiding sunscreen so that we don't um so that we can you know show that oh you know we we love our skin we don't care about what happens to it in the sun meanwhile our skin is dry and crackling or we're extremely sunburnt as a result and in pain we refuse to try new hairstyles because then apparently we're pandering and we hate ourselves and we're doing too much we won't wear colored contacts because again then there's the self-hate issue um, we don't exfoliate or how dare you, you know, use anything that says brightening in the skin care. How dare you use anything that's exfoliating? You hate yourself. And so there's a lot of gaslighting that's done and a lot of insults that we are given that, you know, pushes us away from taking care of ourselves and enhancing our beauty for fear of what? for fear of being judged and being pushed out of the black community i'm gonna be completely honest is that such a bad thing you were i mean like i i understand if like you know you're someone who you're you totally embrace your blackness i'm some someone who doesn't embrace my blackness um but that being pushed out of the community i don't think is necessarily a bad thing because at the end of the day you're part of it whether they like you to be or not um that's something you you will always be in some way a part of it and that is not your fault that is you know, quite literally on your ancestors. Boo-hoo. Uh, that's the reality of it. So, so instead of allowing their insults and their, you know, their attempts to push you down and make you hide into this little box or to conform and look as unambiguous as possible, right? Find those, those issues and then shamelessly enhance them. (laughs) Like find those things that they're like pissed off about and just go ahead and make, absolute note of it and completely throw it back in their faces right so find out what complements your phenotype and by that I mean find your uh, your true undertone find you know your make like the very basics is find out what your makeup is and your undertone is because everything else stems from that well most of everything else will stem from that and so recently and I'll just use some personal examples but recently I um, went from using a super red foundation and like a really dark foundation because every time I would go into the store one thing about me is that I am um, light I am a yellow undertone I'm very, very warm and I'm just basically like a dash of summer, right? And so I, but my face, however, gets very, very red, especially the second I get out of the shower when it's hot, my face gets super duper red. And so I have, I have a red face and like a yellow, everything else. And I go into the uh, beauty supply store or into an Ulta or Sephora or whatever, and I asked someone to match me. And not a single time has anyone ever matched me correctly. I've always been matched with something that is extremely red. Um, It's still like a warm tone, but it's super duper red, and it is super duper dark. And so I end up wearing those colors, or I say, okay, well, maybe, you know, it's too dark, so I'll go with something that's the same undertone, but lighter, and that's still not the right move, so I would do that, and I went years, and I mean my entire life at this point, um, except for the points where I didn't, I say my entire life, but I mean like the last five years or so, when I finally started wearing actual foundation, and not just like yellow eyeshadow, light brown eyeshadow, <laughs> um, as concealer, I would wear these super duper red foundations and I would wonder why is my skin so washed out why does it never look right every time I take a picture I look super gray and dull and it would just really bring my features down and it would dull me out and people would lie to my face saying that I look fantastic when really I mean come on you and I both know that this foundation does not match whatsoever so one day I this you know TMI but I did my makeup completely naked and I took off my robe and I saw my super yellow chest and my extremely red face and I realized um I did not really actually understand my own skin tone and so I decided you know what I'm going to bite the bullet and instead of you know letting myself get into my head and saying no I'm not the shade I'm not the shade people say all the time that I'm you know not that light skin that I'm really not you know that bright that I'm not a yellow bone or whatever. And instead, I'm going to say I'm going to embrace entirely and say I'm a super yellow woman. And I went out and I got 
a warm yellow undertone foundation. I got a super banana um, powder and I looked fantastic. And it was the brightest I ever looked. And I remember everyone, not a single person could stop, uh, could go past me without saying, oh my gosh, what did you change about yourself? And it was that I finally started embracing my actual skin tone. So go out there, look at your chest, look at your inner arm, right? Because our chest usually is less exposed. Our inner arm is usually more like it's less exposed to the sun. So it has less damage, less tampering. And that can tell you your true, true undertone, your true skin tone. That's the first step is to go out there and find that in you and see what it is that is your true beauty, right? Because, you know, whatever matches our natural undertone will always look really, really good on you. So go out there and do that. And I would say once you do that, then you can make other changes that are really going to enhance it. And so I actually made another change. And this one that I absolutely recommend to anyone out there is to change your hair color. I just gave myself at home, and it looks pretty darn good, actually. I gave myself golden honey blonde highlights in my hair my hair is super duper blonde right now and it looks freaking fantastic and it not only did like because i got the right undertone for my body i lit up even more i didn't think i could look brighter but i somehow look so much brighter now like my eyes they sparkle my um blush that i you know i already love that already looked great looked even better on me i usually like to go for pinks and now i totally understand why it looks freaking fantastic now and it's because i literally put my skin tone my undertone on blast with this hair color and so if you're someone who's like what can i do to really change and enhance my look get a hair color that absolutely enhances and blasts your skin tone. I know people say like your natural hair color is the best one that's for you. I don't believe that. Um, I think a lot of us, you know, are just, you just have genetics, right? And there are some people who might be natural blondes that just look better with brown hair. And sometimes you are someone with naturally dark hair that looks better blonde or better red. Like we've seen some people that are like, oh my gosh, they should always be red forever. Like, um, what's her name? Andrea's Choice she looks freaking fire with red hair and she knows it and she keeps it for a reason right and so i would say even if you're not going to do like a huge bleach job go ahead and get like a tint and just change the tint of your hair and change it to one that absolutely matches and enhances your true undertone and you will be surprised to see how much you absolutely pop so that's one thing and another thing is that i completely laugh now because i'm like you know what they called us ramen noodle headed ass bitches. Well, guess what? Now I am one. And so what? And it looks freaking fantastic on me. Like, hello. Thank you very much. Um, I was originally going to go to like a reddish, um, like a golden brown color. But I was so shocked to see how fantastic the blonde looks that I'm going to keep it for sure. Um, and I might go the more golden brown color another time. But right now I am proudly a ramen noodle headed ass a bitch um another thing you can do is wear colored contacts or enhancing contacts so i'm getting an update on my prescription next weekend for my eyes and not only am i going to change my contact uh, my uh glasses because i'm going to get um glasses that frame my face better and that don't make my eyes look so small because right now I have glasses that take up like half of my face and it makes me look so uh, kind of boring, right? Since like they're very light colored glasses and since dyeing my hair, they actually look way better now on me, but I'm going to get ones that are just a better shape that um, my eyes are like kind of like slanted. And so um, they're like, they're like big, but like upturned. And so I am going to... Um, get glasses that enhance like kind of like the length of my eye shape right so that's one thing i'm going to do but another thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get my contact prescription updated and i'm going to get um some basic color contacts as i've never worn colored contacts before <laughs> but i'm also going to get some that are my same eye color but that absolutely enhance it so like olin's has like these um contacts that are specifically like rings like they're supposed to enhance the outer ring or the the inner ring of your eyes it's supposed to make it look like you have ring lights and it's supposed to just make your eyes look super bright and big and that's something i'm gonna do because i 
do have big eyes and I'm going to enhance it because my eyes are a, like a huge um, staple feature on my face. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to enhance that part of my face. Yes. So if you can't avoid my eyes at this point, now you just have to look at them and be amazed and be in absolute awe. So that's another thing you can do to enhance um, your features is to go through and change if you wear glasses or or even if you don't wear glasses like you can go and get fake glasses or you can go get shades that enhance your eye shape and you can get colored contacts and you can change it from blue to green or from or brown to pink or whatever or you can get some that just enhance your own natural eye color and just make them pop even more and you could piss off all the people who are always like your eyes are fake your eyes are fake and so what so what if they are so what if they aren't you don't know and it's not your business and i'm i don't care and i'm going to go ahead and enhance it there's a lot of people who are like oh she thinks she's all that because she has green eyes and guess what she is all that and yes green eyes are beautiful and so what be mad please be mad be so mad because i'm just gonna keep you're gonna have to look look into my beautiful green eyes and cry about it <laughs> right that's kind of the uh attitude we have to go in with this Next thing is buy clothes that enhance your what? Your true undertone, your skin tone. Wear shades that make you pop and make you stand out instead of shades that make you look boring and blend in and look super duper sad. So for example, my undertone, super warm, super yellow, right? I wear shades that are always going to be warm that in some way, shape, or form are always going to be warm. But that does not mean that the color, like I can only stick to certain colors. So like in the winter, you know, I might wear like a yellow, but maybe it's a more muted yellow, but it's still a warmer toned yellow. So it doesn't wash me out whatsoever. However, it's getting warmer outside. And so I'm, it's basically spring and it is now my time to shine. <laughs> all of my, all my warm tone babes Put your hands up. It's time to shine. We, it is our season. So I am wearing brighter, super bright clothes. I have this like beautiful green uh, dress that is extremely bright. And I have this yellow one that it, that makes it pop that I used to wear in high school, actually, that I'm wearing again. And I, I just bought some new clothes that are just very, very, you know, they're warm, they're springy, they're, you know, beautiful, and it makes me stand out. And so I know, I want to say this, right? I don't stand out because I am warm toned, right? I stand out because I accept that I am warm toned and I do everything that I can to make that warm golden undertone absolutely shine so I, I and you know there's just some people where you're like man you see them and they're like super cool tone right like let's say their undertone is like a cool pink and they absolutely rock it like they just hey if I'm a cool pink then everything I'm doing is gonna be cool and they absolutely make it work and they don't shy away from it and they look so 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 beautiful so don't think that because you're not you know warm that you can't make yourself pop or that if you go and enhance your cool tone features it won't pop or if you go and enhance your olive features it won't pop no it absolutely will because that's what's true to you so do whatever you can look up whatever color theory videos you can and just go with that so you might realize that like okay i'm cool toned and i want to go blonde so what do i do and you can go and you can get yourself a really cool tone blonde hair um hair highlights and look freaking fantastic and you will pop and stand out and that is like the beautiful thing about your undertone right so the next thing is to wear brighter and bolder lipsticks and lip glosses so I actually just got one in the mail I got this super bright red fantastic lip that I am absolutely going to wear like crazy I uh lo I just started wearing recently um, NARS Deep Throat. It looks freaking fantastic. Super pink. Love it. Um, and wear something that is going to match your skin tone that's going to bring you out. Don't be afraid of being bright, of, you know, sticking out there. Um, if you wear like, a, like, for example, if you have a cool undertone and you get this super cool bright red, 
wear it girl wear the heck out of it go for it and just absolutely embrace it because you know what there's gonna be so many people have something to say like oh if you wear red lips you're you're a whore you're disgusting or those are d sucking lips like i hear it all well it doesn't matter what they have to say about that because one you're not even like male focused hello we are not male focused on this channel we have just decentered men on this channel yes single women married women whatever women who are looking for a relationship you can still decenter men thank you very much because men are not the center of everything and so go ahead and wear those bright red lips regardless of what they have to say about what bright red lips mean um go ahead and wear that super pink lip even if they say that it will never match your skin tone wear it anyway because i bet you look freaking fantastic in it um, especially if you get one that is the right one for your tone for your undertone not for your skin color but for your undertone um and don't don't let anyone out here try to convince you otherwise that you shouldn't wear a bright pink lip i have one on right now as i record why because i was in the mood and i was like you know what i'm gonna doll myself up because that's what this video is about and i am going to bask in my phenotype right now the next thing to do is to take care of your freaking skin. Like seriously, get over whatever complex someone has given you about wearing sunscreen. Go ahead and put it on, baby girl. It is getting hotter outside. We do not believe in crusty skin on here. If you are a crusty skin girl, please exit off of this video expeditiously because we don't accept crusty skin over here. We accept buttery smooth, loved on, taken care of skin. So wear that sunscreen, um, take care of it make sure that you exfoliate yes oh my gosh having light skin and exfoliating how dare you yeah okay it doesn't matter the you know people are going to complain and they're going to say like oh you're lightening you're doing that you're, no i'm taking care of myself and guess what when you exfoliate your skin and you get rid of the dead you know gross layer you know what happens like okay hold on to something you guys it looks healthier healthier tends to look brighter oh my gosh i know right so take care of your skin um get a hair hair laser removal treatment device and start going over those legs and start making your skin super smooth and super bright and super glowy or if you don't believe in like the hair removal stuff then you can just ignore that part i guess but we're over here talking about buttery soft smooth skin um so take care of your skin regardless of whatever stigma people want to have against light skin people taking care of their skin right so or even if you're like a dark skin mixed girl like go ahead and enhance that anyway and get that super like cool like you guys tend to have like the coolest undertones in the world i don't mean cool as in like as in actually like cool toned but i mean cool as in like wow that's like super dope you have a really rad skin tone and i feel like oftentimes it ends up being dulled out because of people that are uh let's say just jealous and who who are like no we are like the same and a lot of times y'all's undertones are very different from unambiguous people's and i think you should absolutely go ahead and exfoliate enhance that 110 percent um next thing i'm gonna say is schedule that surgery you've always wanted freaking schedule it right now whatever you're doing stop it and pause the video and go schedule it go schedule it the nose job you ever wanted go for it the boob job you wanted to get go for it it does not freaking matter go schedule that gosh darn surgery go schedule that gosh darn skincare procedure go schedule that liposuction it does not matter people want to have so many misconceptions about us and how we get to our beauty and who we are and what we're, we're what we're trying to do and how hard we're trying well guess what let them guess even harder and go for it and do it doesn't even matter those are those are basically the tips that i have and the things that i think we can definitely do to start tapping into our ambiguity and to start you know embracing ourselves for who we are and accepting our skin our hair our all of those all those insults we've received about us about being mediocre about having ramen noodle hair about having jaundiced skin about being lame you know about all this this whole you have a superiority complex go ahead and embrace every single one of those things you know we're not we're not imposters i would like to say we are hmm, shapeshifters you know the reason a nose job is just so easily done and just blends in for us is because we are in direct relations with those who have that natural bone structure hello it is we are in relation to those people you know the reason why blonde hair or red hair just looks natural on us just looks right just fits is because we already have it in our bloodline we already have it 
naturally it could be very easily naturally occurring we are just enhancing it and bringing it out of ourselves you know we can be as ambiguous as we absolutely want to we can choose to be more black passing if we want to so if your thing is you want to be super duper black passing go for it I love that for you. If you want to be more Asian passing, go for it. Maybe you're someone who doesn't even really care to speak English. You just want to speak your language and you just want like your your family's language and you just want to be involved in that and you want to, you know, embrace that culture and do those makeup styles. Go for it. You know, it's not that is I feel the mixed experience. You know, there's been so much talk about um how raising mixed kids to know their black side or to know their white side or to know this side and that side it's not about sides it's not about getting to know either side because truthfully that does nothing for the child other than just being a history lesson of their family right it's like okay yes i know those sides right but usually when people say i want to make sure that my kid knows their like their black side for example what they really mean is I want my child to worship that side. I want my child to be so, so, so familiar that they identify with that side. What mixed kids should be raised off of is being raised to understand what it means to be mixed, what it means to be ambiguous, what it means to move through this world as an ambiguous person, how to embrace your ambiguity. That's what the focus should be here. And that's what the focus of this video is, is ways that you can tap into that and to completely embrace it. You know, the sky's the limit for us. We are free to move in and out of every and all circles that we choose to. That is the mixed and light skin experience. And when people try to shame our, fe our features, enhance them even more. So if I got ramen noodle hair, I'm about to get a blonde touch up, baby. These ramen noodles look good and healthy. If my baby hairs are too long, well, guess what? I think I'm going to do a slick back. And I'm going to do even more dramatic baby hairs with it. Because I just have the baby hairs like that. Because they just do it like that. If my skin is too light, then guess what? I'm about to bring out the body lava. I'm about to bring out the Fenty body lava and I'm going to slather it on and I'm going to sparkle in the sun. So now you have to notice my skin. Don't back down from your phenotype to please a single person because they don't stop wearing wigs and weaves and getting their enhancements. So why should we? We shouldn't whatsoever. So don't let anyone downplay your phenotype. Don't let anyone make you feel bad for your phenotype. Go ahead and embrace it anyway. Go ahead and schedule it as whatever you want to schedule. That hair appointment, that skin appointment, you know, go ahead and watch those makeup tutorials that you always wanted to do and start doing them. Go ahead and learn about your undertone. Go ahead and learn about yourself and enhance the absolute crap out of yourself. All right. And I want to hear some feedback in the comments. Tell me what you're going to do. Just tell me, tell me what you're going to enhance. Tell me what you're going to go do to embrace your ambiguity. Just absolutely let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Au revoir.